It is such a privilege to come into the house of the Lord once more, to worship Him. And as we come this morning, I know we come with grateful hearts. Some of us have had a bad week, because we know that when we commit ourselves to the Lord, the enemy is not going to let upon us. He's going to be with us, left, right, and center. But the Lord has promised that He will never leave us, nor forsake us. Let us stand for prayer. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for taking us through the course of the week and has brought us once more into your courts to worship you. As we come this morning, Lord, we come with a heart of praise and thanksgiving. And as we sing songs to magnify your name, we're asking your sweet Holy Spirit to continue with us as we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to begin with him number 251. He lives. Two, five, one. After two, one, two. I serve a risen Savior, is in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blasts. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives. He leads salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujah. 
to Jesus Christ our King. The hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives, as Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me along my narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to in part, you ask me how I know we live. It lives within my heart. Number three, eight, four. Three, eight, four. Safely through another week. Three, eight, four. After two, one, two, safely through another week, God has brought us on our way. Let us now a blessing see, waiting in His court today. They are for the week the best, emblem of eternal rest. Eternal rest. While we seek supplies of grace through the jail, Redeemer's name, show thy reconciling face, take away our sin and shame from our worldly cares free. May we rest this day in thee. May we rest this day in thee. When the morn shall be the shrine, may we feel thy presence near. May the glory meet our eyes when we in thy house appear. Ere our poor, the Lord a chase, our forever. Conquer sinners, comfort pain. May the fruit of grace abound. Bring relief to all complaints. Thus may all our Sabbaths be. Till we rise to reign with thee. Thus may all our Sabbaths be. Till we rise to reign. Number 3A2, O Day of Rest and Gladness. Number 3A2. After 2, 1, 2. O Day of Rest and Gladness. O Day of Joy and Light. O Balm of Care and Sadness. Most beautiful, most bright, one deep, the high and lowly, who bend before the throne. Sing holy, 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 to the eternal one. Thou art a poor protector. From storms that round us rise, a garden intersected with streams of paradise. Thou art a cooling fountain, in thy dry, dreary sand. From thee, like whiskers, mountains. We view our promise 
glance at their sweet reflection. Thou art a day of love. I gave to raise affection from earth to things above. New Okay, we'll go to a meditation song, number 495, Nail to the Heart of God, number 495, after 212, there is the place of quiet rest, near to the heart of God. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Like God has somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances you can't get through. But right now it seems. But there's no way out, and you're going under. God's proven time, and time again, He'll take care of you. And He'll do it again. He'll do it 
again. If you just take a look at where you are now and where you've been, hasn't he always come true for you? Is the same now as then. You may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. God knows the things you're going through, and he knows how you're hurting. You see, he knows just how your heart been broken in two. But he's the God of the sun, the seas, and the star. He's your father. You see, he can come the storm, and he'll find a way to fix it for you. Sing with me, church, and he'll do it again. He'll do it again. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. A look at where you are now and where you've been. Hasn't he always come through for you? same now as then. You may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. You may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. Amen. Amen. He'll do it again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Happy Sabbath, family. What a wonderful day it is to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Let me tell you something. I've been through a rough week, you know, and being that we're studying about crucibles, it's just like everything is just, you're just seeing the, 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 the reality of or real crucibles are. They are real brothers and sisters. And without crucibles, without things happening in our lives, we will not have a testimony. So I am here giving God thanks to be in his house this morning. And I can come and stand before you, tell you that no matter what is happening, he'll do it again. Just like he did it for Daniel in the lion's bed. He did it for David. He did it for Sadra, Meshach, and Abednego. He will do it again for us. Brethren and friends, we all have to go through fiery trials. This morning, we'll be talking about the crucibles that come. I'll be following the, 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 the topic, the, the, our quarterly, mostly our quarterly. So we'll be dealing with crucibles that come. And, uh, Virgil and friends, we all have to go through fiery trials. And they, and they take different shapes and forms. So nobody, none of us have to go through the same thing. Right? We all have our different, different um, situations, different trials going through. Guess what? Sometimes we have our individual trials going through. And sometimes we have collective or family members, all of us going through something together. I am here to, tell, to let you know this morning that these trials, guess what? They are not abnormal, you know? They are normal. They are not only normal, they are inevitable especially to Christians. So when we see things happening, let us not wonder, oh, what strange, things, what strange things are happening. No, let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus because we know that once we are a child, once we are children of God, we have to go through trials, right? Once we may have things all nice and easy going and you're saying, well, I'm a Christian, I'm not supposed to go through anything. Guess what? 
the trials will come. It is inevitable. It will come. But I am here to remind you this morning that no matter how these trials box us down, knock us over, we have someone who we can cry out to. Amen? Who we can cling to. Amen? And that person is our anchor that keeps our soul. So we'll stand and we'll sing hymn number 534. We have an anchor. Hymn number 534. As we go through our fiery trials, let us remember that we have an anchor in Christ Jesus. We're going to two, one, two. Anchor holds in the storm of life. When the clouds are for their weak of strife. When the strong tide slips and the cable strip, will your anchor drip? Firm, sing out the song, church. We have an anchor that keeps us so steadfast and sure. Below the wall, fastened to the rock, which cannot move. Grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. If it's earthly more, till the storm we stand. For it is well secured by the Savior's hand. And the cables fast from his heart to that can defy the blessed strength divine. We have an anchor that keeps us so steadfast and sure. Fast into the rock which cannot move. Grounded firm and deep in the Savior. It will firmly hold. It will firmly hold in the straits of fear. When the breaker steps that the reef is near. Though the tempest rave and the wide wind blows, not an angry wave, far or flow, we have an anchor that keeps us strong, set back and strong as a billow's roll, fast into the rock which cannot move. Sister's love, it will surely hold in the flood of death. When the waters go, till our latest breath. On the rising tide, it can never fail. While our hopes abide, we will save. When our eyes behold, when our eyes behold, in the dawning light, shining gates of earth are ever bright, we shall anchor back to the heavenly shore when the sun sun
What a promise. We really have an anchor. Let us hold on to him. Let us hold on to Jesus, brethren. We'll now have our scripture reading by Mrs. Marvelyn Wong. Followed by our prayer by Brother Durant Brand. Happy Sabbath, Church. The Word of God is powerful and is sharper than any two-edged sword. Let us take our Bibles to 1 Peter 4, reading from verses 12 to 16. 1 Peter 4, reading from verse 12 to 16. Okay. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fairy trial which is to try you. Although some strange things happened unto you, but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when the glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye approach for the name of Christ, happy are he, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you, and their part be, and their part be evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a, hip, as a busybody in others' mind matters. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christ, as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Here ends the word of Let us bow our head for prayer this morning, church. Close our eyes. Righteous, most righteous and loving eternal Father God, as we come this morning to give you thanks and praise for your keeping, and your extending mercy, dear Lord. Father God, some of us come out of church this morning, dear Lord, with nothing to eat or drink, dear Lord. But Father God, as we come in church this morning, Father God, let us our soul be filled, dear Lord, this morning with the Holy Spirit, dear Lord Jesus. Father God, thank us, thank you, Lord, for the breath that we breathe this morning, Dad. Thank you, Lord, for the sun that shines this morning, dear Lord. Father God, let's come into our heart this morning, dear Lord. Let us all be blessed this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Do you believe that God is still on our case? All the time is there. And no matter the situation. He will see us through. Amen. We'll now have our mission story by Brother Rahim. Happy Sabbath, Church. Um, I hope everyone is all right um, this morning. Um, because God is good. And all the time. Amen. So this morning, Sabbath mission story sorry, comes to us from Bolivia. And it's entitled, Miracle in Pandemic. The person's name is, it's hard to pronounce for me, Giller Moore. Giller Moore. Okay. Bolivia went into lockdown amid the COVID-19 pandemic. All churches were closed and worship service and other church activities were prohibited for the fear of spreading the virus. Small groups of believers began to meet in homes in El Ato, and the second largest city in Bolivia. Guillermo prayed earnestly, how could people worship amid a pandemic, he asked. As Guillermo prayed, an idea formed in his mind. Why not leave the city and hold worship service in a desert place, deserted place? With much prayer 
and with help of several church members, he decided to worship God one on one of many hills around the city. The group chose a hill that in the Aymara language is called Wana Quarter. It means dry lake. No, it's Wana Quarter or dry lake, yes. It means dry lake. It, it, it is located at the foot of the snowy mountain. Eight male church members showed up for the first Sabbath gathering. The men were not discouraged and they continued to meet every Sabbath as they prayed and worshipped the people kept coming. After three months, the two had grown to 100 people. Amen. Including Adventists, Evangelicals, and members of the Christian denominations. God rain and weariness, cold rain, sorry, and weariness did not discourage men and women and young people and children from making the mile-long two kilometers hike up the hill. A single thought prevailed in their mind. Let's keep walking. God is with us. They trusted in God with mediation, fasting and prayer, kneeling on the hill. They prayed with fervent joy to the Lord. It was an enormous blessing to meet on the hill every Sabbath. Many people were seeking the Lord amid struggles with unemployment and illness. They left the hill with tears in their eyes and faith that God remained. Tears in their eyes and faith that God remained in control and would do great miracles in their lives. They encourage one another with Philippians 4:19, and we all should know this. It says, "And my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus." As the world slowed down because of the pandemic. Preaching of the everlasting gospel did not stop. As a result of the hilltop miracle meeting during the pandemic, 13 people gave their lives to the Lord through baptism. Amen, church. Today, the faithful hilltop group has become a company of more than 50 members who meet every Sabbath in a retained hall. Despite the pandemic, the gospel is spreading in El Atoy. Alato, Alto the second largest city in Bolivia. But, but parts of El Ato still do not have an Adventist church. This quarter's 13, this, this quarter's 13 Sabbath offering will help to establish a church in one of those neighborhoods. Thanks you, thanks, thank you for planning a generous 13 Sabbath offering on September 24 to support the establishment of the church and three other in Bolivia by Anjo Mackenzie. This is about everyone. Amen. Amen. Even in the our pandemic, God is still working. He's working all the time. He's never off the, our case. He's always on our cases. Suffering is a present reality in our fallen world. And as Christians, we must learn to deal with suffering and learn from it. So it's how we deal with it that counts. As towards of our own spirituality, we need to learn to distinguish between different types of trials and suffering. This will help us to understand how to deal with crisis in our lives and to draw the best lessons, and of course, to draw closer and closer to God. As in our mission story says, let's keep walking. The people are saying, let's keep walking. God is with us. We are saying this morning, let us continue to hold on, no matter what, God is with us. Amen. We'll now have our necessary review. But before our let's sort of review will be done by Mr. Andre Graham, we'll, we're a bit few in numbers, but as best as you can, um, teachers, mark your blanks, you know, check up on your missing members, and then we will meet back here at 10 o'clock with the lesser review from Brother Andre and if he has any company. So, 
so you can now mark your blanks and check up on your missing members. And you know, um, meet and greet. Okay, thank you. Please mark the blue card, the personal ministry card. Please mark them too, please. Thank you.
Happy Sabbath, brethren and friends. All right, so this morning, we're going to be lesson number two, entitled Crucibles, The Crucibles That Come. Elder Goodley, just because we're such good friends. Let's go, Elder. All right, are you seeing that thing on the screen? My little PowerPoint thing of sorts. So this is to kind of help us, you know, go get through everything, you know, just be so that we have somewhat of summaries as we as we go through the lessons. What do you want? This one or this one? Thank you. This one. Happy Sabbath. Happy. Oh, working now. Thank you for that happy Sabbath. Okay, it's working. Technology's working. All right, so here we are, crucibles.com. Let's just start by reading our memory text. All right. Okay, all right. Seems like your voice is, no, I don't think your voice is low, is low enough for Zoom, so I'll read it on your behalf. So 1 Peter 4, verse 12 and 13, and it reads, Beloved, do not think it is strange concerning the fire trials which it is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. So not just Glad, but the gladness has exceeding joy with it. So, the first thing I want to ask you, you know, I'm less of a preacher, I'm more of a teacher type person. And so what I want to ask you is just the, just the title of the lessons, the crucibles that come. What comes to your mind? What do you understand from that? The crucibles that come. Anyone? Trials that comes in our lives as Christians. Anyone else? Anyone else? Testing. The testing. All right. So uh, this is the reading here on Sabbath afternoon. Gives somewhat of an analogy. Uh, you know, uh, talking about when in science lab, I know you have various materials and you put them, you know, under different pressures, under different temperatures, just under different conditions, and you see that the different materials will yield different results. They will react differently. And Elder Goodlett uh, often, um, often speaks of, for example, if you put clay, if you put clay in the uh, sun, clay in the sun, it will? You don't remember? No, I know. Oh, no, I am reminding you. But uh, because you were talking to the oh, church. Oh, oh, smart, smart. Okay. If you put clay in the sun, it will? Dry and crack. And if you put butter, Let's go with butter. Butter in the sun, it will? Yeah. Melt. So you see, it's the same sun. It's the same condition. But what's different? What's different? The material. How and the material reacts. Reacts. And so, and so we often use the phrase, let's see what you're made of. Right? So as you experience, as different persons experience different situations, it helps them to realize and understand what they, what they are made of. In fact, in ancient Israel, as God led Israel through, through the wilderness, what did God say to them? Why did God allow them to go through all the things that they went through? He said, so that they might know when, if they fear him, if they love him. Because remember, you know, at Sinai, they said what? All oh, that the Lord had said, we will. we will do. So it is basically to prove them. Ah. And many times, we as Christians, we make some vow to God. I thank God. You're hardly hearing me, right? Which one? Oh, okay. You're hearing him? Yeah, man. Step, step, step that way. All right. You're hearing me? You're hearing me? Still, because the mic wants to be tuned a bit. Okay. This one needs to be tuned up a little bit. Andre, team? Take off some of the bass. 
<laughs> All right. Um, I like how Sabbath puts the, the afternoon. And I don't know if we really contemplate. Anybody really contemplated what Sabbath was speaking of? I will talk to myself in a virgin. All right. So let us look at it now. When you look at what is a crucible, let us start there, right in the middle of Sabbath. It tells you that it is basically a what? A vessel for melting a substance. For melting a substance. And this has to do with high temperature. Yeah. So any vessel that is going to withstand that temperature must be created so to speak that it will be able to withstand, right? And it also moves on to say, number two, a severe what? Test. Test. And number three, a place, a place or, or situation, situation which concentrated forces is... interact to cause or influence a change or development. Mm -hmm. Which one of those we fall under? All of them. All right. <laughs> so we would take a something from all. Mm -hmm. Right? But look at the first verse of that paragraph, of that um, section. And I'm going to ask you a question. When you are placed in your crucible, for be it your reason, your, your doing, doing yeah. your doing, or the Lord allows it, mm -hmm. do you, one, melt. melt? When you melt, you know, you know what you do? No, man. You take a different form, the different, form yeah. of your surrounding. So if you are in a cup and you melt, what you do? You take the form of the cup. Yeah. Do you, when you are faced with your situation, your rough situation, Nastasha, do you just melt and just conform to what is happening around you? Do you fizz? And I will look at fizzing as you normally let off things. Yeah. When it starts to come up. Do you fizz? Do you seek to get even? Do you lash out? That is how I look at it, you know. You may look at it a different way. Or do you what? What's the next one? Spit or burn brightly. You have some people, you know, that don't have a mind of their own. So when you're facing a crucible, and Andre say, boy, you know you shouldn't do it. Yeah, man, you know, say, me shouldn't do it. And number, the next person come and say, boy, you know, say, are the best decision you could have made under the circumstance. Yeah, man, you know, say, are the best one. Do you split? <laughs> or do you do what? Do you shine brightly? You're not changing your form. You're not changing anything. But like Daniel and the Hebrew boy, do you shine brightly for Jesus Christ? Relax and humble and just under the pressure. Anybody ever hear the story about the bullfrog? You put a frog in water and just take time, turn up the temperature. Did you know that he will never move and just stay there and roast and cook? Because he adjusts his body temperature to suit it. But we got, as we go through the lesson, we're going to speak more on these. But brethren and friends, what form do we take when we are under pressure? Yes, Elder, I might add that so the first definition definition it um it says regarding i requiring a, a high degree of heat mm -hmm. but guess what remember you know the different materials have what we call different heat capacities mean right. to say it takes different temperatures to cause the same reaction yeah true so you might say well if elder goodless car is stolen may say eh. Sure, you know, but if I have a car and it's stolen, we blow up, God, what? Uh, you understand? So, or, or worse yet, it could be that my phone fell and mash up me on the phone. I simply think that it's a computer to a car. And I react. So it's much more Hello. simpler situation. You might think it's simple, the same but thing. I believe that some people love their phone more than their car. Well, <laughs> so... But so it's not only high pressures or high temperatures, but any pressure or temperature can cause a reaction or a change depending on what you're made of. We move. Yes, to. Auntie Dana. And then if you are a fizzer, 
that are the There's something about we human. If we that fresh part want to come in. I start to say, and judging sometimes we. I don't. I doubt that. If 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 the crucible is true to its meaning, there's no way. These things are normal. These things are. Ex she called them all joy. Example, uh, in Africa, when these and those guys told the disciples, "Hey." Nobody appreciates that's wrong, wrong, yes, you know. I'm not. That means, yeah, right. Be careful what you're doing, you know, these men. And then we said, oh, them and send them. What the as soon as they were, they proved that they were Able counted to, worthy to, to suffer. suffer for his sake. So, would you call that crucible? Because the truth of the matter, you know, many of us as Christians here like trials. Well, who does? No, we don't like trials. But the truth of the matter is that the Bible if you live godly, you will you suffer. Might suffer. Wait, that does sound right. You must suffer. How comes, you can't come to the mic. Then how comes when you come Teeth green, you say you're not come back. Mm, for you just go brush your teeth and come back. Because if you notice, you know, many of the persons you say are still there. By God, because the nearer him is to God is better than you who far off. Yes. You can be going through your crucibles, and I think you don't know, but the reason why is because um, I was going through something, and I didn't know. When I went to the doctor, he told me that I was silent, stressing. I, I, did, I, don't, I didn't know, because I was happy and everything, and him said, when I run the test and everything, them said, a silent stressing, I, I don't know what. Hmm? Well, you went to the Just feel tired. He sends situation upon us, situation upon situation, crosses upon crosses, crosses upon crosses, trials upon trial, church member upon church member, upon us to pressure us, right? But guess what the Bible say? The Bible give us hope, you know, if you know it, you know. But the God will not what? Suffer you to be tempted above that which ye are able to bear. But with every temptation, with how much? Every temptation he makes a way. So any church member come to you and say, I couldn't do nothing better. Tell them, say what? Either you are liar or the, or the Bible is a liar. But guess what? Let God be true and every man be a liar. Every man a liar. Right. Return. Right. So we see that the trials come in various ways. So whether, so whether it's from God in order to try you and to make you better or it's something that maybe you have done, right? Or the devil is just after you, right? But let's focus on the, um, on the situation now in which the devil is after you. As we just mentioned, could be a church member, could be somebody at work, could be because of righteousness, you've lost your job, whatever it is. Coming back to Sister Coombe's question, what we have to do, you know, is look at everything through the lens of the great controversy and recognize to ourselves this. So again, whether it's your fault, God sent it, or this devil is after you, you must recognize and accept it. This is a means, this is a uh, avenue, this is an opportunity for me to grow from strength to strength in Christ. Well, 
All right. Be not drunk. So consider, consider, consider actual, be, being actually sober as opposed to being drunk. You know, for example, if you're driving, so obviously none of us here drink, but people that drink, alcohol that is, alcohol that is, <laughs> right? People that drink alcohol, if they, so they might not be drunk out of their wits per se, but you know, any amount of alcohol causes some amount of impairment to your judgment, right? And driving is always as, is always as difficult as it is, even if you're sober. So imagine so much so, imagine how much worse if you're drunk. Now, similarly now, being sober mean, means you're actively conscious, you're vigilant, you're, 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 you're careful, so even you're alert. So even, you're, for no example. impairment to your mind. So for example, let's say, let's say uh, you want to give some people a Bible study, or you want to, as a brother, you want to give a sister a Bible study, you know? Being drunk in this situation, for example, might mean you go around to her house at 10 p.m. at night by yourself. Do you, do you, would you consider that being sober and being vigilant? No, because that is a situation in which could cause a lot of problems. And so if you're considering carefully what could come from this, is this, is this the best approach? Not doing that would be in being drunk in a sense. So we must always be careful and considering all the situations as Christians and always look to glorify God. So I, I, that's, that's what I would say. So being sober means that you have clarity of thought. You understand? You're not on influence of anything or anyone or even the enemy of souls mm -hmm. so they can think clearly. Now we look at the crucible of sin. We're just going to fly through. Crucible of sin. Consequences. Right? And we will have to bear the consequences. You know the worst consequences of sin? When we cause somebody to get hurt. And sometimes those minds Right? If God has that, he can lift it. So, let us look at some of the, 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 the don't drink, you're drunk. Right? Not true. Mm -hmm. If you eat, and you eat right and so forth, you open your help yourself to all manner of ill health. Right? If you go outside of, uh, you have sex and you find out you're pregnant, no matter how you confess your sin, the baby now will just disappear. <laughs> consequences. Do have consequences. But I give God thanks, you know, that even though when our minds condemn us, right, God is greater than our mind, and he's, he knows all things, and he's only is a sin that is not confessed. So sin that is not truly confessed. Elder, you know that I want to briefly connect this to Thursday's lesson when it talks about crucibles of my life. Now let's say we do something bad, something consequences at that. Confess and we pray. Let's say it's something regards health. We know God can help thing easily, right? But suppose God says, no, no, no. I want to go through this. It will be good for you. As mature Christians, whether it's ill, whether it's ill, whatever it is, right? So as we go through the various crucibles of sin, we still look and say, hey, this is for my best. And we don't stop thinking about God. We don't Maybe God isn't that smart after all all these other and so Paul had a side. do we have a thorn in, his, in our side and the thorn that we have is a church member not you why in the love answer that one day yes <laughs> but sometimes the thorn that you have may be a church member sometimes the thorn that sometimes the thorn that you have may be all different sort of things but God used. Finish. Five minutes. Yeah, man, it's good. It's good. It's good. 
I don't no, give out okay. it, man. I give thanks for it. All right. Now, the thorn that you have, God may use it to purify you. I have some bad habits. And in some situation, God wants to file me down. Mm -hmm. You understand? And so we will be facing a situation and our temperament because some people, you know, let me tell you, you have God do make me get a chance. Give me a dose of But God now go just down in say, you know. God is going to make you come across some church members. Did you know that many of us still have up with two of the same little stumbling block that we refuse to over it? Do you know that? These things that are our own good. Mm -hmm. So Paul, he, when he, because Paul, they believe that different, it's not stated. Mm -hmm. But based on scripture, with his eyesight. Okay. Right. Letters. Some person said, boy, then I pluck out their eye and give him. And things like that. Because when he met Christ and he was blinded, it is believed that when the scale fell from his eyes, his turned fully, to yeah. him fully. And so, and God said, listen to me, my grace is sufficient. For what? My strength is made perfect in your weakness. that we are going through. Are we speaking to God? I have a wicked temper. No man, I have a bad temper. No man, serious. No, trust me, you don't want to see it. And anytime I am getting angry, I think, let me see whoever sees it. I'm supposed to see it. And some drive any which party take me. Sometimes when I pass up, Back. Me just drive because if you speak when you're angry, you will make one of the best speech you will ever regret. When the word when the word fly out of your mouth, you know matter what you laugh, you, all them I say, you, I will never forget what you say to me and do. So, these are some of the things that God is using to rub up. Uh, Elder, you know what comes to mind when, so, not with your angry thing. Um, what came to mind just now, that gave reason. And, About uh, me? Just cool, no? <laughs> and so, I won't get money, but something that she said that we can all um, uh, uh, agree with is that when she's, when everything is wonderful, everything is wonderful, family, money, flow, school is going well, everything is just great. You find that you pray less. Well, I mean, you might still do the routine prayers, yeah? But you won't agonize because guess what? Everything is good. So it is when these crucibles come that we are drawn even closer to God because that's what the purpose is. Again, any purposely are the devil are devil is after you. That is the purpose of which is meant to serve to draw you closer to God. And we move to where we know we soon talk about uh purification. Go on, talk, my man. Let's see. All right, we're done. We cover everything. Oh, we cover everything. Oh, good. Are any All final right. thoughts? Yes, brethren and friends. I love how Thursday put. Into a garden for those who into a garden for those who do farming. I wish for our good. Pray by God's grace, He will allow Him to do that. Amen. Closing statement is Happy Sabbath. Amen, amen. Brethren, what is happening in our life?
Drive, Country, can rest assured that we, amen, no matter the situation, we, what a lesson. You know, when you're going through trials and tribulations, you know only for you to get. Amen. Let us continue to hold on. To take this opportunity to ask members to remember, remember your quarterly funds when you're, you know, in your classes, when you're giving your offering. And, uh, and also, see the hands of those to pray and hold on and don't ever stop praying for our family members that are not in the home. Will all our visiting friends please stand? Welcome to those. Welcome. Welcome to those who are online. Pop over today. The will take care of you through every or all the way. He will take care of you. God will. All you, all you may need, he will abide. God, care of you. Or all the way, ear of you, God will take it no matter. Be the test, go lean we one upon his breath, God will take. Take care of you. God will take care of you through every day of the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. God will take away. He will take care of you. us here for a purpose and when we are called, we're not called just to sit down and do nothing else. We are called because he has given us responsibilities and he has authorized us to go forth and execute responsibilities. What am I talking about? I'm talking about stewardship. Because of who we are, we are called people. God has given us responsibility to be responsible for the and for all the things that he blessed us with. So therefore, because he 
is saying to us, respond to the call for which. But there's a field out there to be worked, and there's a harvest to be reap. But sometimes we consider that because we did not sow, we have no right to reap. But what prevents us from sowing? Is it too late for us to sow? And if we don't sow, can we expect to reap? Yes. Trees that you are eating from that bear in your fruit, you did not plant it. Okay. So, and you are fruit. We, we reap and eat of the fruit that some has plant. Now, we must look beyond where we are now. Because beyond us, we must see that because we reap from what somebody else sow, we need to sow so somebody else can reap. You get the point, Bridget? Okay, so we are all sowers. And because we are stewards, God expects us to execute the, the, the plan that he gives us. Now, what is that plan? Now, as disciples of Christ, but money is also important. Because if you look around, are able to do and if God has given us authority and responsibility and we do not make use of it then we are not good stewards and we will have to give account of what we have not done okay the brethren so look in, in ourselves and ask towards 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 and we all have They are good stored. We're going to lift him up in prayer. Um, Sister Millicent Green. No. Shortest pencil is better than they. All right. Now, when it comes to families, the family that we're going to be lifting up in prayer for the week illness. Right. So, I want to lift up the, the family. Yes. All right. Brother. This list from week. Two week. All right, so we have Brother Roy James. So the name individuals, Sister Anna Prince, Brother Thompson, and Brother James. Right? Brother James, the individuals for the family of focus is gonna be Elder Kimani Smith's family. Now we're gonna for the missing persons, the missing members that we Hugh Elliott, remember him? Brother Leary Rowe. Right. Brother Rowe, Leary Rowe. And I see Marvin making steps. Right? Marvin Jarrett. Huh? All right. We have Hugh Elliott. Leary Rowe. Huh? Right. And Marvin Jarrett. I see Marvin has been making some steps, but the battle is real. So please lift him up in prayer. Now, as we go through this week, if you want to be added to next week listing, just shoot me. Uh, uh, that's right? No, take time with me, right? So just shoot me a text, uh, and we will be adding it. So. We are starting our prior list. We will be having more direct and fair. That prays together, stays together. And that is the aim of this. To make it um, something that we continue to do. Right? Continue to pray. And if you feel so impressed. Somebody called me and said that somebody called them just to check up on them. And as the, she put down the phone, she said, she just feel impressed to call somebody because somebody check up on her.
So what may I have to do? And check up as well. Let us make it a call somebody on them. Amen? And the last brethren, we are living in the last days. It is truly the last days. We are barely coming out of COVID, which many persons believe COVID not done yet. We are coming out of COVID and what we have next to deal with? Monkeypox. And you notice, you know what? They are this round of what? Vaccination. And still, we have not got all the information that can be got from monkeypox. Because a lot of things are floating around there as to who are more what? Susceptible to monkeypox. Because they have isolated a certain group. But we're not here in mainstream. All right? No, other thing is that right we're heading for some real shortages in a lot of things. Now, when these shortages happen, the prices are going to do what? Soar up. Population control something. Right? The devil is wrath against God's people. And I ask the church this question before I sit down. Do you know when your name will be called? Do you know if somebody is right now sitting down planning say so you're not going to live tomorrow. Virgin, this is I'm speaking reality. I'm speaking I am going to my own business, you know. I don't know why I'm choosing the route where me I drive. For drive. And it look as if the man catching free and just pull over at night. Because every turn him turn, who they behind him? I'm yard me But I'm just showing you how paranoid people are. And I said to him, if I was trying to do him something, because I watch him after me drive off, him drive out back. If I was trying to do him something, him not understand the least, and if people are going to kill people in a halfway tree, he might go about their business. He might pull over that now and make it no better for him. Virgin and friends, this is the time that we are living in, and I the day that if it is the last amen. amen also invite anybody you can to the various programs of the church at least one show to at least the crew be defeated fire trials but the job that comes in trial the glory that shall be ours when Christ shall appear. Amen. To take us home to a place where there will be no more trials, no more sickness, no more pain, no more heartache, no more killing, no more death. Where we are long to go. To close Sabbath school as communication we'll stand and we'll sing out this song together just over the mountain the promised land lays a holy city be and I told him just over Sandra can you play this for us please play it on the Put the words on the screen so we can...
let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for all that you have done for us and all that you will continue to do. We trust you, Lord, and we believe in you. Help us, Heavenly Father, to overcome. Help us, Heavenly Father, to trust and believe in you no matter what. Thank you for today. Thank you for the lesson study review. Thank you for all that was done, Heavenly Father. I pray that as we go into the next portion of worship, we pray that we will all be blessed. Have your own way in our lives, I pray, for Christ's sake. Amen. Thank you. Will all persons who are back, I think, program, please meet in the choir room. All participants in the divine meet in the choir Jesus for the clean sin blood, are you washed in the blood of the washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? of Christ, my King, through eternal ages, let His praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears. There's a friend who watches day and night, 
I go to him and pray my every care And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right yes. Have a little talk with Jesus Tell him all about our troubles He will hear by an animal carrying the virus or by handling and eating meat from an infected animal. So it can be transmitted from human to human through close contact with skin lesions, for example, rash, blisters, sores, or scabs, body fluids such as saliva, semen, anything like that, droplets from respiratory contaminated objects such as bed linen, clothes, or frequently touched areas. What is the incubation period? So the incubation period, or the time between infection and when the symptoms start, is usually from 15 days, but it can range from five days. And signs of the monkey pox. So fever, chills, intense headaches, extreme exhaustion, muscle ache and back ache, swollen lymph nodes, or as we Jamaicans call it, wax and cannon. Rash that usually appears one to two days, one fever. It can be mild and it can be related with skin rash, and the skin rash can be itchy and painful. So the For weeks so it can be out for up to a month so what is a treatment for monkeypox Treatment is based on the symptoms so if you're experienced fever or pain panadol taken and you need to ensure that you drink lots of fluid who is at risk of being infected with monkeypox so any person in close contact with someone who monkey box. How can prevention measure in prevention? He has affair. No matter the problem, he's always there. I understand the reason sometimes you find God always on time. Please listen to the following announcement. As a to the election of directors of the East Jamaica Car, Auditor Sister Marlene Weir, Ministry Director Adrian Johnson. That's it. The funeral. The husband will be held this Thursday, July 14, at Macedonia SD. I will go. The Education and Children Children's Ministry Department. Congratulations to Gabriel, Kara Meeks, and Keith Hufat. On their success in the PEP exam, we congratulate or congratulations are also being extended to members of the church who have family members who are also successful. May the Lord continue to grant you wisdom to excel even higher for service. 
on earth and greater service. And there's a letter here from the East Jamaica Conference of Seventh day Adventists to all pastors, elders, and men, dear brothers and sisters, warm Christian greetings. Consequences to the conference session held July, June to 20. Rotation of pastors, August 1, 22. There might be a few exceptions in case where the pastors were recently assigned. Therefore, we crave your continued work and the church from strength to strength. Walker. These were the Amen. Okay. We just want to add our quota of congratulations to those who have done the GSAT. We have two persons. Sorry, common entrance moved to GSAT. That is where it is now? All right. I just get over common entrance. I'm just over GSAT. All right. So we have two persons who, who have been um awarded places at excelsior at excelsior and that is gabriel Goodit and keith Hufat. and we have one that has been awarded a place at wilmer's that is meeks also this time we just want to uh, the assault that is on our young people. And the sad thing is that many are not even trying to resist. So we need to pray and work, work and pray. Regent, we are in a serious crisis, you know, in this world's history, you know. Let us make prayer a way of life. And Amen. We're asking at this time all those who are on the outside to please come on the inside. All please asking those on the inside at this time to please stand for the call to worship. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of the Lord and be more ready to hear than to offer the sacrifice. For they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash in thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and on earth. Let thy words be few. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Bow down before him, his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of lowliness, kneel and adore him 
the Lord is his Virgin and friends, we are here to worship God. We are in his presence. Let us, as we worship today, give God the honor that is due to his name. Let us today purpose in our hearts that we will not be distracted to the left and we will not be distracted to the right. But let us hear the voice of God speaking to us that this is the path the Lord is holy temple let all the earth keep silence before him he is here hallelujah he gracious as we come in your courts to praise your name we honor you we glorify you and as we stand here as a sign to Jamaica and as a sign to the world that the is and the Sabbath is a sign of your may the world accept this great sign may they be a part of the fulfillment of the gospel peace today as we praise you in the beauty of holiness the church say amen My Lord, and give your face a rest. Raise your hands to the one you love the best. Then shake hands with those near with a smile. One more time. Zoom and those in here are members and our visitors. It's indeed a privilege to be here, and we are in our right mind. God is awesome. God is excellent. He is superb, and we ought to give honor, glory, and visitors this morning and in Johnson Town and. And we enjoy having visitors. I love, love having visitors. That's what happens, you know, when you're easily distracted. We have Duncan. We love seeing you. Jasmine. This is from Florida. Mm 
make the book. Don't say it. Your name. I see one, you know, but I'm not going to call her out. I want her to stand on her own. Anybody see any visitor around? Amen. Praise the Lord. A family. Yes, but she heard. So we want to welcome her when she comes. Welcome everybody. Welcome Aki. And welcome Katie. We are happy that you're here. Regular members, let's give them a wave. Hi. We are indeed happy to have you. If you're happy and you know we take a stand. If you know we take a stand. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show. If you're happy and you know we take a stand. If you're happy and you know do a smile. If you're happy and you know, give a smile, we see it in your eyes. If you're happy and you know, if you're happy and you know, we give a smile. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Sister Goodlit. Just like to join in extending the welcome from the pastor. Everyone, regular members, and also our guests and our visitors or visitors are we have special guests. I see seated by the Bible worker one of my friends all the way from St. Thomas, Sister Cadian, okay? And um, I want to recognize all our new converts. Here are our new converts. I see our brother in the wheelchair here. And Sister Tanya Grant. Sister Tanya Grant. Okay, the gentleman who was baptized in the river, brother Falder is right there in the back, and his wife, amen, they're right there, and um, another new convert, are you there? You're by the window, could you raise your hand? All right, you're not hearing, but we'd just like to um, recognize all our new converts and all our business friends, and also recognize all those who are on the virtual platform. And I give you a wave and let us worship the Lord indeed in the beauty of Holy Administration is already geared up and they have hit the road administrative road running there will be an ordination july 23rd and then there will be pastoral this arrangement enacted on august 1 Festival of the Lady will be, is August 4 to 6. Festival of the Lady and persons here who are assigned to be there will recognize the relevant information so that you can be fully prepared. Also, there is some, and I think we have already selected or looked persons who we like will be supporting for the summer camp. Camp will be this year. So Philip Field is properly for uh, 
then down in October, their October 13 to 17, there will be the Women Ministries and Friends Retreat. And we are very happy for the Adventist Church because the church supports the and try to bring persons in to the fellowship of Christ. So as we worship today, please remember our elders, we will be having an emergency elders meeting on, on um, Monday evening. District. And I'd like you to pray for our sister church, Port Royal. Port Royal is to crucible prayers from the brethren. Amen. Join me in standing. Sing hallelujah amen loud praise to Christ our King The scripture reading is taken from Psalms 96. Psalms 96. Psalms 96. Psalms 96. The heathen, his wonders among all the pe all people. For all the gods of the, nation, of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of people, give unto the Lord glory and strength. All the earth. Let the heavens rejoice, let the be glad, let the sea roar, and the fullness thereof. Together, he cometh for he shall judge the world with righteousness and the
shall we heaven and reverend we give you praise loving lord we give you praise. we give you glory we give you hallelujah because our loving lord it is a privilege such a in your house loving lord pass by the hands of death and so loving lord as we offer to you our praise do for us because we are sinner and it is indeed that we live and move and have our being loving lord you know us you know everything about us dear loving lord you know our ills you know our valleys you know our lying down you know our sitting down you know everything about us so loving lord i'm asked this morning do for us what you cannot do for us and the praises and loving lord your people have been coming up and the rough first is at us but we take courage because loving lord your promise will never leave us nor forsake holding to those promises loving lord i am happy we are happy that you'll open their eyes breathe our souls are doing in which we come from loving lord you know our situation you it's again loving lord you know our values i pray for our family members who have not yet the as lord and savior loving lord i'm asking you tell to deliver to us so loving lord hope it, and this is said and done and you to take us home if this is said and done and you to take us home it is going to be a time it is going because loving Lord, waited for me, and you will say, Come, Father. So, loving Lord, until then, until then, my Father, until then, help us to be faithful. What we say, and whatever we do, thank you for hearing us, and thank you for answering, dear Lord, in none other name but in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the people of God say, Amen. Lord, good time. Fear is on my chest, the weight of the world's on me, everything is crashing down. Can't stop. 
stop thinking about your goodness, goodness. I can't stop. I can't stop thinking. As the ushers prepare to collect an offering, ask that the congregation please stand. Church here and return it. You can also return it by doing bank transfer, which is BNS, BNS Center, account number 100 SIM 0912. Account number 100 SIM 0912. Or you can ask a member of the Cheshire team are a member of the one of the elders to come and collect it from you and return it at this time when it is brought into the temple the pioneers of the early advent movement they had lived through the great disappointment of expecting jesus to return in 1844 and then exciting recognition that being correct about the date but wrong about it was them that aiding for ordinary efforts depended on individual generosity. They looked, they took their responsibility that at among other ways of saving, they would keep one meal per day and use the money to save for the mission. I wonder whether we today could be counted upon to give at those levels of personal sacrifice. There is no mandate to skip meals. The point is that they were 100% dedicated to the sharing of the gospel and a message for the times with the world. May we examine our hearts and determine where our levels of excitement, education, and generosity lie in regard to the spreading of the precious knowledge we have of Jesus to the world. Every meet in my house and prove me now heritage to the Lord of hosts. If I not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shan't be room enough to receive it. and girls have Sabbath. It is another beautiful Sabbath. Allow me to introduce my two talkative friends behind me. Tuki and Peppy. They are two Tuka. They to welcome you to school and to our children's corner. Daddies, we welcome you. 
And if you are joining us for the first time, oh, we are glad to have you. I think I also hear seagulls. That means our storyteller is somewhere near to the sea. So listen up, he has a story to tell. boys and girls. Good morning, bigger boys and girls. Okay. My phone is silver dollar. In a big family, they were poor, but they were very happy. Happy? They have all given their life to the Lord because they that one day. So they were very happy. Even though Tony was eight years old, Tony had given his life to the Lord. He had asked the Lord to wash away his sin because the Bible tells him that if he does, the Lord will. So one day, Grandpa and he gave Tony a silver dollar. I, a silver dollar, I think, is like our one dollar. But I have found this coin, which is you money. It's not exactly one dollar. I couldn't find a one dollar. But just to represent the silver dollar, see it, how it's shiny and nice. Okay, right. Tony was so excited. He got this one dollar, he got this um, silver dollar, he put it in his pocket, spin it around, put it back in his pocket, take it out, and he looked at it. So he looked all over. He got the house, he went to see, and there was a small, you have not prayed. Him again. I don't want to pray. I don't feel like praying. He turn and he guess what he guess what happened? When he knelt down, guess what happened? On the penny. And here he was saying to himself, if I remember to pray, I want to leave a text with you from Jeremiah 33. It says, Call to me and I will and show thee. Not and a from Ellen White should the sons and daughters of God be reluctant to pray when prior in the hands of faith to unlock heaven's storehouse where there are treasures, boundless resources of omnipotence, and that steps to Christ, page 94 and 95. Can one of you boys and girl or girl pray for me today? Who would like to pray? You want to pray? Okay. Come. Pass your hands and close your eyes. God, thank you for the life we are for the morning, the school day. And when time we read, we have to pray. And thank you, God, for blessing. Press me. Amen. Amen. Okay, you can go back to your seats.
the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. One solitary life. One what, brethren? He was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in another obscure village where he worked in a carpenter shop until he was he never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never went to college. He never visited the big city. He never traveled more than 200 miles from the place where he was born. He did none of the things usually associated with greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He was only 33. When his friends ran away, one of them denied him. He was turned over to his enemies and went through a mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves. While dying, his executioners were there gambling for his clothing, the only property he owned on this earth. When he was dead, he was laid in a borrowed tomb through the pity of a friend. But 19 centuries have come and gone, and today Jesus is the central figure of the human race. And the leaders of mankind's progress, all the armies that have ever marched, all the navies that have ever sailed, all the parliaments that have ever sat, all the kings that have ever reigned put together have not affected the life of mankind on earth as powerfully as this one solitary life. I speak of none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus. He is the one that we have come here to see today. Never, ever lose that. But today, he has laid hands on a man to represent him, to stand in the gap so that he could not be destroyed. He is the pastor of the King's Chapel District of Churches. He is a man who loves the disciplinarian. He is one who is an educator. And he is here to present a message from the Lord to educate us in the ways of righteousness. I speak of none other than our very pastor, Pastor Holland Thompson. Give us what the Lord has given to him with a song of meditation by our very own elder brother, Clifford Stewart. God speaks, the high mountains tremble, when God speaks, the loud billows roll, when God speaks, my heart falls and there is wrongs in my soul. Speak now, I pray, of salvation and Lord of creation. Oh, speak to my heart. Today, speaks the angels obey him when God speaks, all nature is stopped. God speaks. Hard hearts are softened, 
for oh, sweeter voice he speak to my heart speak now pray God of salvation Their crying, oh, speak to my heart today. When God speaks, did smile and then to answer. When and Lord of Speak. Purpose of the of our music must be right. Be the God of creation and the God of redemption should speak through our music. What do you say? Thank you, Elder Stewart. Thank you. for the song, for the introduction, and pray that God will bring you a message today from his footstool as we aim to celebrate another Sabbath and worship him in the beauty of holiness. Did you have a good week? Let me see all those who had a good week. We praise the Lord. Despite the fact that we might have some amount of crucibles, we are still alive. And if we studied the lesson, we would see where the crucibles help to make us strong and help to refine us and help to and to have to similitude of the likeness of Christ himself. So we should not pine and whine too much when we undergo, undergo crucible. Understand that the trials make us whole. The trials make us whole. Praise the Lord, my sister. Help to make us whole. Shall we pray? Mighty God, ruler of heaven and earth, I give you thanks and praise for your goodness and your love towards mankind. As we come today, I pray that your Holy Spirit will take and take today not merely be uh, not to act as spectators, but we come truly to worship you in spirit and in truth behind the shadow of your cross. Let your name be glorified. May your spirit, may your people, the congregation, 
weakness. Worship should never be minimized. Do I get a weakness from someone? The word of God. Turn your words to let me see the Bible. We read works. We read one to thirteen, but I'm home. It says this is a call to worship. Read verse one, and I like the creation to read. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Oh, <laughs> thank you. You're, you're following. You're, you're following. I'm at 95. All right. 96. Oh, sing unto the Lord. A new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Is the heathen is among all people. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Strength and beauty are in this sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindred, unto the Lord glory and strength and I. Amen. As we come to worship Him, we must do spirit and truth. We worship the, the Lord, spirit and truth. So, on use of contemporary music and worship, it continues. That debate is more important to note that the music, it is important to note that the music and worship style of the Adventist Church, the Seventh day Adventist Church, should reflect you. This microphone is not the right tuning. Uh, the right our music and our worship must be different. We should not accept on the worship style of other other denominations. We must be remain the peculiar people. Praise the Lord. We must in the peculiar people. Worship him, novel peace, speaks to the fact that we are Seventh day Adventists. Who are we? And I don't say Seventh day Adventists. My is toward many times he is perfect, and they call me Alan Oward. My father gave me to me it was classically named Holland Howard. I not. Olan Oward. And we are Seventh-day 
Adventist. A-D-V-E-N-T-I-S-T. All over the radio, all over the media, I am hearing Seventh-day Adventists. We are special. I thought Johnson Town would give a resounding amen. We are a special people. Do you believe? Special. Praise the Lord. So we are Seventh Day Adventists. Approach worship as exist. A worship service that meets the needs of Catholics, Methodists, Palians was in college. There was a brother, a pastor, whose name was Dr. Sylvan. When you, when Dr. Reed gets up to speak, he placed the Adventist church, amen, on a high pedestal. Um, are you listening to me? Uh, and today, I want to walk in the footprints of Dr. Sylvan Reed, who believes that Adventist should, Seventh-day Adventist, should remain people of God. Amen. And Sabbath teaches us to understand that there ought to be a distinction between sacred and secular. What do you say? So also is it with and worship? Do I hear you say music and worship? There must be a difference between the sacred and the secular. Do I have a witness out here today? Do I have a witness in this place? Study of the music of Jerusalem. In the Jerusalem and the heavenly sanctuary shows that the music used for entertainment. For what? Amen. The music entertainment must not be taken in the house of God. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that today there is much entertainment in the music in the church. Many of our singers who come to sing, they entertain. I like you to understand people age that many of our, us are slipping into an entertainment mode. And if you come and hear something that is not we are special people. Adventist, Seventh-day Adventist. One of our key texts, who, who knows which text I'm going to use now, that 1 Peter 2, 9, and he are chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, a peculiar people that he should do what? Show forth his praises. Uh, I underline showing forth his praises. And I wonder, scientists today, in their choice of music, 
our style of worship, in our deportment, showing forth the praises of God in the way we should be. Question. And the next part of the sentence says, of him who called us. Who did what? Called us. From where? Out of what? Darkness into his marvelous light. We are called into the marvelous light of and therefore you ought to be a our music must be it cannot be like the music of any other deep verse 10 says in time past mercy lord have mercy. We were like aliens and strangers. But now are the God. Amen. Now, there's a difference between a people and the people. If you study the grammar, the English grammar, ah, is the indefinite article. It means that you are not just ordinary any person, but the is the specific and definite article. It means that we are now God's and people. Will you say amen? We shall not obtain mercy. We were the chosen ones. Israel was chosen by God. Modern Israel. What a the church of the living God, remnant church. Many of us are in the premises, but we are not really standing on the promises of Jesus Christ. The great contrast, revelation, and adultery. Now has now engaged the imagery of worship promoted by Babylon out there on the plain of Dura and them bow down the end of music. Three verse four then said aloud to you it is commanded people, all nations, and language. What next? The Sabbath. What next? The Tulsary. The Tulsary. Of what type of music church? Worship not God of the carnet and all type of music sounded the young men to the word of God. Could it be brothers and sisters could it be that as in ancient Babylon Satan is using Nevis that was a sea but praise God they stood for in the church. When I say in the church, I don't mean in the Pentecostals and in the church of God and in the Baptist and in the others. They are right here in the Adventist church. There's a mixed music, folk songs, jazz, Rock and roll, disco, country show of hip hop, secular music, the gospel, and many of us are bowing down to the music 
music Dura, the antitypical plane of Dura. Many are bowing down, and he will cause many. And it's many are eluded and deluded through music. Be that many Christians will come to like this kind of story, gospel singing and music, gospel music, because they sound very much, because they sound very much like the music of Babylon. The Seventh day Church. Clear lines of demarcation. We as a following and practicing church manual page 85. Music coordinate. Music. Music. And we there's a thin selecting coordinators. The church manual. Church should make great care. Should make great care in selecting music leaders. Choosing only those really consecrated and Provide appropriate music for all church worship services and meetings. I wonder if you heard on Zoom. I like the world to hear, like the Advent Church, is our directives. It's sad to say. It's sad to say that many times. The selection of the neighbors are selected. But sometimes they're selected because of, because of their fame and their in the church. And we got to watch those music who are and they tend to be able to do anything they want in the church. Why are you so silent? They dress anyhow. Hmm. No standards are set. Secular or that of a so never be introduced in our service. Sickness. Church is so silent, so silent on amen, so silent to say hallelujah. Can we get a person, a witness in God's church with their pastors and elders? Do you say, you know, listen, the leader, this is your church manual, must work with the pastor and that music lies with the sermon and theme. Will you say amen? And you don't just come up and sing anything about the ethos of the message. Ethos and ethos of the message it has to do with charisma, warmth, the energy of that message. And let me tell you, this question of music is powerful and And as I discuss leaders from our church and higher church, it is my 
be a music from the higher vision down in a special towards the second coming of Jesus Christ. Leaders is under the direction of the pastor and elder line that and not work in the of the pastor and elder. The music leader should counsel with them about the what? Music to be rendered and the selection of and musicians. Sometimes at your music days in the musicians are called in and you don't know, elder don't know, pastor don't know from which era they're coming. Because some of these musicians, they move from church to church, and they don't hold membership in church. Some of them are very promiscuous, and they move around, and they flip here and flip here with the young lady in church. You know, they're all over the place. And I want you to know, when I was in college, Sister Renita, you know that I have some um, play upon words, and they say, they say that a mass of geological on axis accumulated no more composition rotating on an axis accumulates no vegetation a rolling and they use this listen to there's a first day preacher and he's music and he says a lot of these music leaders are some of a lot of the men are big homosexuals you have to be careful who you bring in the church boy i have such a church this morning i feel like leave and go to gina jenny's church it has a an amen group somewhere. An amen group. And I'm there. Yeah. Preach it, brother. Or uh, preach it, sister. Because this is a very important subject. And you these. Watch some of these. Who they are all over the place and they don't hold membership but you invite them to come and sing to your young people and they're very flirt and no church can discipline them because they have no real membership let me tell you something but sometimes the pastor feel like moving down. You know, they're the pu persons who are going out to minister in another church. The board must know. Do I have a witness? The pastor must know. Years ago, I was at the church. Some young men who left the church and they went all the way down to Montego Bay. And they were in a crusade, evangelistic campaign. And the pastor took up his phone and called me and said, do you know so and so and so. Yes, I know so and so and so. These are the others. 
But there was one of them who was not, and I said to the pastor, to give the pastor sound directives. So the selecting musician, sacred music is an important part in our worship. Praise the Lord. The church must exercise care selecting choir members. Members, you cannot be on the choir and you are having malice in the community. You can be in the choir and you're malice in some next to you. Both of you are singing on the choir and yes, you are in malice. Clear up. What are you singing? You are, a, you are a minister of music and as much as important as I am presenting here is as Important the message. Hello. The church must exercise care in selecting quiet. Very, very important because they occupy a conspicuous place in the church service. They show examples of modesty. Of what? Modesty, decorum. What is decorum? Dress, behavior, in their appearance, she says. When you look at some of our, if I had the autonomy, I would disqualify many. But I hear. Many of us saying we must allow them because we may. Oh, I beg to disagree. My mic is shifting. I beg to disagree. The principles of the Bible, a soft word, a soft Turn it away wrath, grievous words stir up anger. If someone is not walking in the right way, you right way, you approach them the godly way. Speak to them in love, speak to them in care. And I think when you have done your best, angels. He'll do the rest. Some will upset. But what are you going to... Will be upset. But what are you going to be do? What will you do? What are you going to do? Speak to them in love. Why do we rule our world? To stand in a uniform manner. Looking... Presentable. Some people dress well when they're coming to God's church. I see some of the musicians coming up. Church out of pants. Looking almost like a sense of falls here. <laughs> and I believe if you're going up there to represent God, you must be on your best. Put on the best suit. Look good. And I don't believe that we're going to be glorifying, glorifying clothes ourselves. We're not glorifying clothes. But even if it is one suit you had, I remember Pastor Bignall would give some serious stories about when he was a youth and just baptized. And he had one suit, but it would be clean and it looking good. Neat, 
is accept clean. Cleanliness is next to godliness. It's a means of spiritual nourishing to the church. It's an outreach opportunity to the church manual. Every most good and regular church. These things must be preached from the pulpit. Members meeting, we have time to catch for everyone. So we need to preach them. End time falls worship and music upon us. We identify Babylon with a power that will lead the world into perverted forms of worship. One wonders if secular music also will be a vital role, play a vital role in end time fall worship. Biblical account of music related to falls worship at the 32 verse 9. Time will not allow me. But it says, and it came to pass a soup hand and broke them beneath the mountain. In the plains of Moab, the borders of the promised land, the Israelites were beguiled with music and dancing, leading them into a terrible apostasy. Numbers 25, 1 and 2. A segment of the Christian community has embraced the music of the world. We associated three things I'm going to name now. Associated ethics, theatrics, and philosophy. What's, no, theatrics and philosophy, antics. The Oxford Dictionary speaks to food, the music now with a lot of turnings. I listen to the music. You will recognize that pushing the message. You ever hear Jim Reeves sing? Jim Reeves? When this life is over, I'll fly away. We don't want to hear that today. Today we are here. Sometimes the curves and the turns are such that you lose. Even the note you lose. Philosophy is the fundamental nature and knowledge of one's belief to X. Why are you X? I can't tell why. Ask a Seventh-day Adventist so named. Our Adventist Seventh-day Adventist because he believes in the second the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week. That's part of it. Fundamental beliefs. Will you say a Those numbers, as we teach them, and I say praise God. Worship the first Christian. There is a merge of the secular and Christian music. But I'd like to continue on Sunday. I'll say this. Many Christians have accepted the attention to self, similar, or to uniform 
sacred and secular music that you cannot know the difference. Hebrews joined up with secular education. I want to preach a education message one day. Because there's a merger. The Hebrew education came from the Ten Command, the Word of God, the law of God. And the children of Israel were supposed to learn, first of all, the precepts of God before they learn mathematics and all the rest of it. All of that is good, but the law of God is better. Precepts of God is better. There's a homogenization of the music, bringing secular music and sacred music he says, he will cause all of us to be beast. A style that is increasingly visible in our Christian music culture and our churches today. And you don't even know that there's a merger of secular and sacred music. That you don't know that you're engaging He's singing some of this. Listen. Watch your Seventh-day Adventist weddings. Hello. And the songs that your young people are using. I've done just about weddings now. And... It is increasingly popular, Elder. Many of our Adventist young people don't want to use a church. Marrying the church. Sing the hymn. Repeatedly, counsel. I counsel youngsters in the choice of songs. And they swing away from using the traditional hymnal songs. Two of the best listen to the philosophy and the message in Happy the Home. When you're getting married, a very good song to sing. Don't watch the popular song. Some African song. What I see there, set up some song. And they march and they jump and run up this, run up. And as you run up, you run outside and you. They dance up and dance out. And as the pastor says, what the pastor says, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband until death do I part. Until, until we find fault. You're not happy. Listen, listen to the words now. Happy the home. When who is what? Feels and love feels what? Every breast. If God is not there, you're going to divorce. When one there is and one their prayer, and one their heavenly rest. Watch the theater. Huh? Happy the home where Jesus' name is. You're going to. This phone, as you shift it, it, it goes away. We. we back to the basics and the fundamental belief of our church. Uh, and I think close off because so and I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to lead us back to the basics of our worship. Back to our fundamental beliefs. Back to the three angels' messages. Fear God. 
give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heaven and the earth, the sea, the fountain of water. So happy the home where what? Prayer is heard and praise is wont to it. Where you want to sing the songs of Zion. Where parents do what? Come on, church. Come on, church. Talk with me. Where parents the sacred word. To me, this is fundamental because if the parents don't love God, the children are going to love the word of God. And all wisdom if you don't prize the wisdom of God, you're going to prize Satan's wisdom. Talk to me. The philosophy. You can't beat them. You can't go around them, my friends. Give me my hymnal song. They might be old, but they're not cold. They are not old. They may be old, but they're Hear what it says. Let us in our homes do what? Agree. Agree. Marriage counsel. Hello. I say to them, young people, many times you hurl mother. Cover, spoon, basin, turn missiles. And anything you catch, you fling it at the man. Women love to hurl things at men. No man thump you. <laughs> no, let, let me get in the psychology of this thing. Men. Fling it. Take almost anything they catch. They'll fling it. They'll hurl it. Right? And... This blessed peace to gain. Set our hearts in what? Love to thee. And love to all will reign. The next song. Six, five, six. This And the These songs. And when you see this. Is, we don't want to hear this song anymore. Of all human hearts, transcending before we must come to the altar and pray before God. And our young people don't want to get married in the church, riverside, beachside. Hope. Why not come in the church? I think the church is where God's blessing is. Let them build me. It can be anywhere, you know. But this is a symbol. He said, let them build me a sanctuary that I may do among my people. Now, li listen to me. There's about the church, Ella Goodlit, because anytime them dead, the last place them come is where? The church. And let me tell you some pandemic showed me something. As a pastor, a lot of persons were angry when their dead could not come in the church elder. They were very angry. So deep in our psychology, something about the church of God. Something about God's church. And when it comes to the final moment, you want your dead, even when it's a gunman, and as I wrap, there was a man out in St. Thomas who was, who was one of the most wanted men. Have you ever heard about Doppy Film? Hello? They call him Doppy Flim. When he was murdered, he was furious. And they said he went to Haiti and got bombed. And when the police shot at times, you just see a figure going over that side. They said. 
but finally he was trapped in and they no pastor wanted to bury him take him in their church but the family members wanted him to be churched do not fool yourselves with God's church. That's why it tells us it is the only place where he bestows his supreme authority. Supreme authority. God is invested in his church. There might be a lot of scholarly argument about that. But when you die, you want your relatives generally to be church in the church. When you're getting married, a lot of us don't want to go to God's church. Don't want to kneel at the altar. But it says, Oh per perfect, oh perfect life, assurance, and tender assurance. With childlike trust that fears, grant them the joy that brightens earth. Grant them the peace which calms all earthly strife. Let the strife in the marriages. This song can direct your, your marital and save your marriage if you understand it. Glorious unknown, unknown morrow that dawns upon eternal love and life. Your love must be and it must coincide with Christ who gives life eternal. May God bless us that we understand the philosophy of our message, the philosophy of the message in the songs. And let us aim to bring back the true worship in song and praise in the church. And let us be careful that as we praise God, we praise him through the ministry of music in spirit and in truth. May God bless us. Amen. Let us stand and turn our hymn to hymn number six. Beautiful song. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Just before we sing the final stanza, there might be someone today who would like to say, Lord, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. I'd like to worship you in spirit and in truth. You may not have been yet baptized, but you'd like today to indicate your intention not be today 
near future, you like to make your calling and election sure to indicate by raising that you like to worship God in spirit and in truth. Is there one? Even before we sing the next dance, one person might be a visitor, might be a visitor, would like to raise your hand. Do I see a hand down the back there? I see a hand down there, a little boy, a little child. I see a hand on my right side. Is there any hand on my left side indicating that you deep in your heart to worship him? In truth, she's another little girl, wants her hand to be recognized. Praise the Lord, little one. Praise the Lord one down there. Praise the Lord. Continue. There might be a hand somewhere and there might be a hand also indicating as members of the church that we would like to sing and praise God correctly and understand how to praise Him in the right way. These though we bring them in trembling. and keep you for those who raise their hands may he give you strength and those little ones who raise their hands may God continue blessing and guiding you even as you prepare for accepting him of age in Jesus name amen let us pray God and our father we praise you, we glorify your name because you are worthy of all our praise. Lord, teach us how to worship you. Teach us how to behave, Lord, in our, comp in our act, in our singing, and the music that we listen to. As we have heard, Heavenly Father, help us to apply to our lives and help us, sweet Heavenly Father, to come before you with holiness what you require of us so that you can be pleased with us. For those who have raised their hands, might not given their life to thee, they are contemplating. Sweet Heavenly Father, allow your Holy Spirit to worry their mind, Lord, until they come to you because it is a beauty to worship you. It is an awesome privilege to worship you. And so, Father, I pray that you will bring them into your presence your to worship you, to give their all to thee. Bless us as a congregation. May we present our life continually as a sacrifice, surrendering all to thee, that we can be prepared for your second coming. Continue to bless your man's servant. Continue to help him to lead your church. Give him the strength in the words he comes to so that we will heal and Apply to our lives and live the life that you have called us to live. Bless us now. Please me and bring us back safely for another service. In Jesus' precious and holy name.
Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion bright and blessed, he prepared for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing. 